Hello, everybody. It's Sheldon Tisnat from Soul Speak. How are you again today? So grateful to be in this opportunity to share such wonderful, wonderful speakers with you in such a wonderful space uh, and intention of Soul Speak to come together in community and support and fellowship and in service of one another and and expressing our gifts, embodying our gifts, lighting up the world, lighting up ourselves and living that life of joy and purpose and meaning and fulfillment. Thank you. So again, here we are with our season, How to Fully Embody Your Talents and Gifts and Light Up the World, a tribute to Wayne Dyer. So we'll just invite Wayne's energy in. Welcome, Wayne's energy in. Thank you for being part of the process, Wayne. And he certainly is. So his quote for this interview is, Loving people live in a loving world. Hostile people live in a hostile world. Same world. Loving people live in a loving world. Hostile people live in a hostile world. Same world. Wayne Dyer. I love that quote. That really brings it home for me. So I'm really pleased and excited to announce our guest today. Her name is Takara Shilor. And Takara helps people step into their true magnificence, achieve life mastery, and live their divine purpose. And after a mystical encounter with dolphins in 1993, she left the security of a high-paying engineering management career in the pharmaceutical industry, of all things, to move to an island and start a nonprofit for dolphins and whales. Quite a shift. Her two best-selling books are Peering Through the Veil and Dolphins and Whales Forever. She's the creator of the Dolphins the Dancing Dolphin Sacred Healing Oils and Myths, and has been leading global meditation since 1998. Her email newsletter is read by over, I'm sorry, read by people from over 100 countries across the globe. That's a lot of countries. Hi, Takara. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Sheldon. Delightful to be here. How are you today? I'm excellent. And how are you? I'm really good. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Interested to to ride this energy of this interview. Takara and I were were sharing uh a little bit before the call how much energy was coming through in in the pre interview. And so we were just opening up and grounding that energy a little bit and it'll be really interesting to see what unfolds here. So I why look don't we start to with it. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, and and you know, let's find out a little bit about your story about going from an engineer in a pharmaceutical uh in the pharmaceutical industry to moving to an island and starting a nonprofit. I think that sounds wonderful. <laughs> well, you know, like so many people who get into spirituality and metaphysics and alternative healing modalities A lot of times that happens through trauma, and that's kind of what my story involves. Um, I kind of jokingly say that I spent my first, for 20 years, I dedicated myself to the pursuit of academic and then career, like mastery or success. And then I spent the next 20 years looking at enlightenment and truth and spirituality and finding calmness and centeredness and being one with the universe. So to me it's come full circle and I sort of do both now where I'm out in the world but I'm also very centered and balanced and I help other people do the same. Um, But that all began when I was under massive amounts of stress at work. I was the only female manager in a pharmaceutical company and one day I woke up not feeling well Next thing I know, I'm laying in the floor in the fetal position, remembering being raped. And I, the event happened years before. It was like 15 years later. I'm finally, it's coming up for processing. So for 15 years, I had kept it at bay and pretended it never happened. But the stress at work couldn't, you know, the stress was so intense that I couldn't pretend anything anymore. So all of these trauma dramas from the past came spilling out all over everything. Um, And it was in that moment that I realized 
even though I had everything everybody thinks they want, like a lot of money and a great house and a sports car and a cute guy and, you know, all the things, <laughs> um, I wasn't. I, well, that's what you know, the great American dream, right? I was living it. But sure, I wasn't right. Happy. Yeah, I was not happy. Not truly. I mean, I had all the accoutrements, but I wasn't genuinely in a place where I felt good about myself or about my life. Um, because it, for me, at the time, it was all external. You know, I had to have the career. I had to have the position. I had to have all these things to feel good about myself because I had so much inner wounding. Um, and so when this happened and when I had this awakening and remembering of being raped, it was my doorway to discover all these things about myself that I didn't know. And my first pursuit became spirituality. Um, and I discovered some very interesting things. And one of the things that I was taught immediately was how to meditate which was fabulous. You know, you're in a stressful job. One of the greatest things in the world is to meditate and stay in, centered in that process. But um, as soon as I began meditating, dolphins began to spontaneously show up in my meditations. And there was a lot of healing energy that came along with them. So I would see them. I would feel them. I would see my, sense myself swimming through the water with them. And it was quite a healing opportunity for me. Hence the reason I left and moved to an island and started a you know, nonprofit for dolphins and whales is because the whale the dolphins had really affected my life in a really positive way. Well that's still a big jump to me. Like having that inner Oh, it's inner, monumental inner meditation. <laughs> yeah, having it is, that inner meditation it is monumental. Like going, actually moving to an island and quitting your job. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. fascinating. Well, you know, there are some of us are sprinters. And we jump off cliffs and we ride horses bareback blindfolded and we'd walk on fire. And, you know, we want to get to the end. We want to be enlightened. We want our life to change. And and some of the things I'll be sharing later on in our interview, um, I'll talk about some of what's required. But, you know, courage is important. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so you, you've said that Dr. Dyer is both a comrade and an inspiration. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yes, I can. So, you know, when I was talking about first waking up and, and having this kind of dawning from from the rape experience memory, as I was learning to meditate, one of the first things that I did is I discovered Stuart Wilde. And I read his book, Affirmations, and it was so funny and it was so eye-opening and it it really helped me start seeing things from a different perspective and I became quite a fan of Stuart Wilde and I read all his books, I listened to all of his audio tapes, I saw him live. Eventually, I did his eight-day Warriors in the Mist training in New Mexico and while I was there, what we found out was Dr. Dyer and his wife had been there the week before taking the same course. So he and I were sort of in the same pursuit of metaphysics around the same time. It was really cool. Um, and ever since then, I, you know, I really felt an affinity for him. Um, but the way that, so that's how I feel like a comrade. But one of the things that I really, I mean, he's got so many fabulous qualities, but the thing that really spoke to me most about Dr. Dyer is the kind of storyteller that he is. And he could just, I mean, you could listen to him forever telling a story, always having a point. And and when I used to listen to him tell stories, I could literally remember them almost verbatim. I mean, he just really had a gift of storytelling. Lots of people say that about me. And so I I kind of looked to him for inspiration in the storytelling arena. Um I remember the first time I ever saw him speak live. He was scheduled to speak for an hour at a breakfast. And two hours mm-hmm. later, his presentation was <laughs> still going on, and no one cared. Like, his yeah. story that he was sharing was so riveting. We were all crying. Like, everybody in the whole room was just crying, crying, crying. And and we didn't want the story to end, and we didn't want the event to be over because it was that mesmerizing Um, but he did a lot of great things for a lot of great people, and he helped a lot of people, including like Esther and Jerry Hicks, get into Hay House and then be able to bless so many other people with their work. You know, he's done that for a lot of people. 
where you he can has. help them and get their books and their careers launched that way. So great man. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, he did he did have that gift of storytelling, didn't he? Really mm-hmm. did. Amongst other things. Mm-hmm. Right. Um so let's shift gears a little bit into into your gifts. And I are you ready to guide us through a little experiential exercise? As stepping I would into love your to true magnificence. Yeah. yeah, great. We'd love for you to do that. Yes, I would love to do that. So for the listeners, this experience, it's a guided meditation, and it's going to help you touch in with your own magnificent self. So what I want you to do is to close your eyes, take a few slow, deep breaths, and focus your attention on your heart. We're just going to stay here for a moment and breathe. And if it's comfortable, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathing in light. And as you breathe out, releasing any tension, any worries, any cares. Breathing in love. Breathing out all those things you wish to let go of. And we'll just keep breathing in and breathing out gently, focusing on our heart for a moment so we can kind of get out of our head and into our body and and into that deeper place, that deeper state of mind. If you're feeling tension anywhere in your body, just relax and let it go. And as you begin to feel more relaxed, more centered, more balanced, Think of something that you're thankful for. Remember something where you feel gratitude. It might be something as simple as a smile. It might be something wonderful that happened recently that you weren't anticipating. Or just the gratitude you have for the friends and family that you enjoy. Once you're fully relaxed, we're going to begin to travel forward in time. I want you to transport yourself into a place where you're sitting near a big stage. It could be an arena. It could be a school auditorium, a civic center, the Super Bowl stadium, Wherever you find yourself, whatever size of that venue is perfect. But see yourself sitting near a stage somewhere. As you sit here looking at the stage, you find yourself also looking around the room and you see that it is full to capacity Every seat is taken, and all the people in the audience seem very excited, like they're really happy to be there. They're really thrilled at what's about to happen on stage. The MC comes on stage, takes the mic. He's got a tuxedo on, and the crowd cheers, and you clap along with them because the festivities for today are about to begin. And the next thing you know, you hear him calling your name over the microphone. You're being asked to come up on stage to accept your Life Achievement Award. You're stunned because you had no idea that this entire event and all these people are here to celebrate you and the contribution you have made in the world. As you make your way to the stage and climb the stairs, you hear him say that every single person in attendance is someone whose life you have touched in a positive way. 
It brings joy to your heart and possibly even tears to your eyes. Take a moment and look around. See their smiling faces, the gratitude and joy that you have made such a difference in their lives. Feel what it feels like to be on that stage. Soak it in. Bask in that radiance and that appreciation and acknowledgement. Now accept your award and take your bow. As you, as you head back to your seat, let us move back in time closer to right now and then stop for a moment. Take a moment to discover the one skill, the one divine talent, God's gift, if you will, that you possess, that if you fine-tuned it and expressed it, you would impact this many people in such a positive way. Regardless of your past, the trauma drama you've endured, what others think of you, or any of the failures you've experienced, you have some unique skill or talent that when fine-tuned and expressed is a blessing to all those people around you because you were born to be this magnificent. Now come back to this moment and look at what is stopping you. You already have this gift, this talent, this skill. What is the giant boulder standing in the way of you getting up on that stage to accept that award? What is keeping you from touching that many lives in such a positive way? Whatever you see, hear, or sense about that is absolutely perfect. Whatever's in the way is your greatest teacher at this time. And your whole life is about going beyond that now and becoming the person you saw yourself becoming in the future. Feel what it feels like to be on that stage. And remember that feeling whenever you feel a lack of confidence, any confusion, or like things are just not working. Remember who you are here to be. Breathe it in. Ah. Now when you're ready, open your eyes. Mm, wonderful. I love that. Great. Mm, that was wonderful. Thank you. <clears throat> you are very welcome. So I know you also talk about the noble seas in your teachings. What are the noble seas and, and why are they important? Well, just like you t said in the beginning, you know, going from being an engineer to quitting my job and moving to an island and starting a nonprofit for dolphins and whales is quite a giant leap. When you want to go from whoever you are right now to the person you envision yourself as in the future, it requires a series of, of shifts and changes. Some can be huge. Some can be baby steps. We, we tend to take all of those. Um, but the more comfortable we can become in shifting and changing as individuals and trusting that the universe has our back, you know, and, and our best interest in mind as we're presented with opportunities and challenges, um, the easier it is to actually achieve that, that being, that state of being that we're trying to achieve in becoming the most magnificent person we feel we're here to become. And so... I believe there is a state of being 
that I call the noble seeds, and that's being calm, clear, confident, and divinely connected. So calm, obviously, is being centered and balanced, feeling at peace, living in a harmonious way, even when all around you is chaos and things seem to be going awry. Regardless of all of the mayhem, you yourself can still remain in a calm and centered place. And it's really only from that state of being, of calmness and centeredness, that anybody can make great decisions. You know, when you're stressed, you tend to become illogical and, I don't know, we we make some silly. We do silly things when we're not centered. (laughs) Um, (laughs) We do. We do. We're human and, and we're hysterical people. I mean, it really is humorous to watch some of the things that we do. The second thing is to become clear, and that I'm talking about on every single level, clear in our body, eating healthy and, and ridding ourselves of pollutants, being clear in our emotions and our mind, thinking about um, powerful thoughts and empowering thoughts and trying to stay away from fear, and also being energetically clear, uh, clearing our energy field, um, making sure that our chakras and our energy centers are open and flowing. So, again, it's about clarity, being clear on all levels. Um, The third thing is being confident. And people, some of the most brilliant people that I've ever met, for whatever reason, have no confidence. And without that bit of confidence, they're stuck in mediocrity, and they will stay that way unless they somehow, you know, re- realize, discover their own magnificence, their own brilliance, their own beauty, their own strength, their the attributes, the fabulous qualities that they have that everyone else sees but they don't. Mm. Um, it takes confidence, and it takes clarity and, and all of that too, but... Um, you have to be confident to, to step out there and take the actions necessary when that still small voice within prompts you with something or an opportunity comes your way. You have to have the confidence to take the action. Um, and the final one is to be divinely connected. And, you know, I think anyone on a spiritual path, that's what they're pursuing is a strong connection with their own internal guidance and knowing when they're on and off you know, when when they're in alignment and when they're not in alignment with that divine wisdom. Um, so when a person can be divinely guided in every moment, you know, you reach a state where you just know where to be and what to do and what to say in practically every moment. And when you're in that place, when you're calm, clear, confident, and connected, I mean, miracles happen. It's just amazing the way life unfolds when you're when you can stay in that place. And when you say stay in that place, I'm going to just assume that it's kind of it's not you know, it's it's a bit organic that we're moving in and out of those that state often and it's maybe it's just about being there more often. That it's not quite I think that it's static about- of it's definitely not a static place, but when you've been there enough times, when you've held it long enough, and, you know, meditation, there's lots mm-hmm. of ways to get there, but when you have felt what it feels like to be in that state, state and then you've felt what it feels like to be way off of it, and you recognize yeah. the feeling, the difference inside your body, how, the, how it feels, and the difference in the clarity of your speaking and, and your thinking and the kind of... Um, synchronicity that occurs when you're in that place, you just start to pay attention. You start paying attention to your body and your emotions and how you're feeling. And when you're out, you work to get in. And So it's kind of like a barometer then, an internal barometer that you're always saying, okay, where is that needle? You know, am, am I centered or am I way over here or am I way over there? Has this thing that just showed up on the path in front of me You know, this monster on my path, has it really thrown me off? Have I gone way into fear? Have I gotten really angry? You know, whatever it is, those are the things that let us learn where we need to continue to do some work so that we can stay in that place even longer 
more more of the time. And so I So how does that translate into utilizing your gifts a bit easier if you're living in the noble seas? Well, if you are calm and clear and confident and connected, if you've achieved that, you know what your talents are. I mean, because you know who you are. You're clear about that. So when you know what your gifts are, and you are following these little whims of inspiration that come because you're divinely connected all the time, you've got the confidence to take the actions that then let you get out there and use your gifts in a way that helps others, inspire others, whatever the gift is. You make a bigger impact with it because of who you've become. Mm. So what are some practices I know you, you, I believe you have five practices you encourage everyone to do. Uh, what would those be? Let's, let's break it down for folks. Well, I, there are many ways that you can achieve those states, but I have five that I think consistently assist people. And, um, you know, I kind of recommend that people do all of them, not simultaneously, but, you know, to, to include each of these things or as many of them as they feel drawn to, um, to assist themselves. And the first one is meditation. And meditation lets you go into a deeper state of mind. It lets you get to know yourself better. Um, There's numerous forms of meditation and ways to do it. There's no one right way. But when you can quiet your mind, you find a level of clarity that just isn't there when the mind is always busy and chattery and and you haven't find stillness in in the mental plane. Um, The second thing is a body movement of some kind that opens up the energy channels in the body. Yoga will do that. Um, The sun salutation particularly is is a series of movements in yoga that open up all the energy channels. Tai Chi can do that. The Tibetan, the five Tibetan rites can do that. But any sort of physical movement, even dancing, you know, if you dance and move your body a lot, you can do it that way as well. But when you open up your body and you move, flowing like seaweed or doing these exercises, you're opening up all the energy centers in your body, which allows for a lot more clarity and for a more centered, balanced state of, uh, to be achieved inside yourself. Another one of the things I recommend is time alone in silence in nature. I think the mm-hmm. fastest way to... Um, get centered and balanced, to find clarity, to feel better about everything in the world is to spend time with nature. And for me personally, I like to go hiking in the woods or I like to sit by a stream. Um, I find that people tend to, it's not always the case, but people tend to be more drawn to the element that is associated with their um, zodiac sign. So I'm Pisces, for example, and I'm just a water freak. You know, I get as much insight taking a bath or a shower as I do 20 minutes of meditation, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. because the water element really feeds my soul. I love forests, though, and I love mountains, and I love the desert. I mean, like, I'm just really into nature. But for people that are not used to connecting with nature, sometimes if they look up the element that's associated with their zodiac sign, they will find an affinity. So for people who are fire signs, I suggest that they um, stare at a candle or sit by a fire. You know, they're the people that like to go and build campfires or they have fireplaces in their house. That is a form of meditation, and it's a way to connect with nature. People that are earth Mm. signs, they do really well walking, taking hikes, sitting on stones, you know, big boulders out in nature. That's just amazing. Or even playing with dirt. And, and planting planting little plants or having gardens and things like that is also really good for those people. Air signs like wind. They like wind chimes. And um, being high up, so being in places that are high. Someone, uh, I think it was Doreen Virtue, mentioned that Wayne Dyer climbed something really, really high, and, and I think she was discussing the fact that he was an air sign. Um, and I, could, I may be wrong about that, but I think that's where I heard that. Um, 
And then, like I said, with water, we just need to be near water. It could be a fountain. It could be a stream, an ocean. Any, any sort of water really helps us. That's the, uh, the one on time and nature. Number four is kind of unusual. Um, some of us are into it. It really is, is something I highly recommend. It's da dousing with a pendulum. And the reason I like dousing so much and the reason I think it's one of the primary tools is that when you learn to douse, every time you pick up a pendulum, what you're saying is that you're asking for support from the universe. And I find that the people who practice dousing, their intuition tends to get really finely tuned really quickly. So that's why that's one of my favorite tools. And the fifth thing is to work with energy tools, things like crystals and flower essences and, and different healing tools, Reiki and other hands-on healing things, things that raise the vibration of you and whatever you're working with. So those are the five. That's great. And, you know, I'd love to come back to number four, dowsing, and specifically why it's important. And it doesn't necessarily have to be dowsing, although dowsing is, you know, what works for you. But the reason behind it, for the practice, uh, what you're really doing, and why don't you say it in your words again, because that was just brilliant. Well, you know, I kind of threw it out in the moment, so I'll say it in a different way. <laughs> Every time <laughs> no, you pick up a pendulum, I want that really <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, you know, rewind the the, video, the audio, right? No, um, you're setting an intention. You know, when you pick up a pendulum and you go to Dallas, you're saying to the universe, I need help here. I'm looking for external support from the unseen, from God, from the universe, from my my guides and angels, and, you know, I call fairies and dolphins and all kinds of beings to assist me. And the minute I pick up a pendulum, I've basically, in that one action, called them all in without having to name them all. I'm saying I want help. I'm seeking guidance from higher wisdom. I'm open to receive such guidance. And so every time you do that, it's an affirmation that you're looking for support and you're open to receive it. And the more you do that, the, what happens in the end, if you douse again and again and again, is, you know, at first you're asking questions and you're getting responses. And based on the responses, sometimes for some people, you are spontaneously begin to ask another question, one that came from a deeper place, a higher place, that's not even really yours. I mean, it is you, your higher self. But, you know, it, it wasn't your original question. It's kind of like you start going down a trail. It, it's a way to open up kind of to channeling information and questioning. Um, and it's just a, it's a doorway into higher wisdom. And I find That's it's great. really, really fast. Um, and, I, I, you know, it's just something simple, and it's one of my favorite tools. I love how you shared about that the, the next question can come, and it's from a different layer, uh, uh, um, a different self, so to speak. And uh, that's exactly how this tribute to Wayne Dyer came, came forward, the same way for me, opening up right. to that next layer of wisdom and, yes. and energy and channeling, and that just dropped right in. Uh, so I really like, you know, I, I don't douse, and I'm going to go ahead and check it out. I'm going to either go to your website and look around or just Google it. But I'm going to, I'm going to, that's great. Oh, I'd love it if you come to my website and check it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I wasn't. I wasn't positive that you had some dousing information there. I, I have but, uh, I have an e-course on dousing, and I've read oh, the well, book. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Go in there, then. Great. And I have the inside track. <laughs> and we all do. So anybody else that's interested, too. Let's, uh, and we'll talk more about that uh, in a little bit. So, uh, okay, great. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, um, mm. you know, what... Uh, you say there are nine things that get in the way of living our passion and expressing our gifts. So what are those nine things? Well, I actually call them the nine deadly sins. You know, it's kind of based on the seven deadly sins, but these are nine, and they're all mental. Like everything that's in our way is our own mental stuff. So here they are, fear limiting beliefs, judgments, expectations, attachments to outcomes, guilt, sh 
shame, blame, mm. and victimhood. Those no. are the nine things that just ruin it all. Huh. I'm really unfamiliar with those. <laughs> well, these are things like like the dis- like you. the information. Yeah, know. yeah, I know, I know. You you don't have any of those, right? That's what you're saying. No, right? Yeah, no, I've never experienced any. Never encountered any of those. We're all yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, let's talk about those. So you, nine things in the way. I'm going to just jump the gun. Uh, spoiler alert. I'll bet you can assist us uh, with that. I really can. Up. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. Most of the nine deadly sins became part of the personnel reality through trauma and emotional pain. And when I had my spiritual awakening, it was dolphins that literally rescued me emotionally and energetically from trauma of my past. You know, I mentioned to you that dolphins showed up. Well, mm-hmm. you know, I, I've been given a bunch of tools, like opening up to this information i've received all kinds of information and training directly from my guides and this this dolphin angels open the doors for me um on ways everyone can heal all this stuff and move beyond all this stuff because this stuff keeps us stuck this stuff is the reason people don't have confidence and so it's kind of where i spend a lot of my time focused and so um I call them the angels of the sea, the dolphins, the messengers of the divine feminine. And I call the ones that I work with, like I mentioned, dolphin angels. When you connect with them, you become more balanced, whole, and in harmony with the world and with your own self. And I've got a free gift. It's called The Seven Secrets of Dancing Through Life, Empowered, Enriched, and Living in Joy. And you can download that. And when you do... You get this how to connect with these dolphin angels, and you'll learn powerful exercises for clearing out negative energy and thought forms like these ones I just mentioned with the nine deadly sins and how to infuse your life with all the good stuff like joy and flow and love and all the wonderful things. So all of that is available in this free gift. Do you want the, uh, awesome. the URL? A, oh, we have it. We have it. Okay, it's, great. It's right there by... Yeah, by Takara's picture and by her bio, just click on that uh, free gift and it'll take you right there to the download. <clears throat> so um, review really quickly. Just what were those nine nine things again? The nine things again. Okay. So they are fear, judgment, uh-huh. limiting beliefs, expectations, attachment to outcomes, guilt, shame, blame, and victimhood. Mm. And and you said that they uh, they form out of some kind of trauma. Can you? Well, I mean, we take these on. We either uh-huh. got it passed down through our ancestry and our DNA. You know, they've done studies mm-hmm. and they've proven now that you can have the same phobias oh, sure. as your ancestors. And so these are this it, this falls into the same category. Like these literally can be. Um, passed down through through your ancestors. So, you know, if your ancestors went through the Inquisition, well, you know, <laughs> you could have some fears around certain things that get triggered, you know. But Now, wait, Takara, yes. that's interesting. I, I hadn't heard any studies about uh, – I've certainly read, and because I've, I've gone through a psychology background, I know the, the famous and, and the renowned family therapists that talk about seeing the shift in – intergenerationally with uh, the parents and the grandparents and and uh, the generations below. When, when one generation made a shift in the healing, how mm-hmm. it would immediately shift those. Mm-hmm. But I've never seen uh, an actual study that you're talking about that actually shows the ancestral going, you know, beyond those Yeah, uh, no, there, But there, tell me about now, that. Well, I mean, I've, I've, I can't quote you that I just have information. I'd have to look it up for you. And, you know, I can do that and post it somewhere. But they've done studies that, I mean, this is sort of new information. They're just discovering that when, like a previous ancestor had phobias, it is passed down. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, you know, we, we've known that there's a predisposition for illness, okay? This just takes it right. to another level and realizes that it's not just physical issues that can manifest genetically. 
It can also be these fears, limiting beliefs, judgments, all that stuff. You know, we, we, everything in life, I talk about four relationships. Our relationship with ourselves, others, God, the earth. Most of what we're doing is about these relationships. And running these nine deadly sins screws our relationships up, <laughs> you know, they screw up every relationship we have with ourselves, with everything, because they taint the truth of what we're seeing and how we're perceiving. And so some of it is passed down through generations, and some of it we make up ourselves in trauma drama moments. Mm-hmm. You know, we just suddenly think that the world isn't safe. And you having a psychological yeah. background, you know that. We we make up stuff, and then it becomes the, the law of how we live, and it lives in our subconscious, and it and it mm-hmm. runs how we operate in the world. Um, and so that's why I like to focus on these. And when you work with energy healing tools, taking them out happens faster, it seems. At least that's been my experience and a lot of people that I've worked with. Mm, wonderful. Wonderful. It hit me when you were speaking that – it makes perfect sense that these studies would come out now because of things like Ancestry.com where we have the technology mm-hmm. to actually research right, in right. a way our ancestors and so we could actually actually see probably uh, and get a clear knowing of the, of our ancestors and perhaps yes. even their personalities and their phobias and then be able to track that into our current life experience. Right. Wow, that's, that's phenomenal. Well, I'm getting Love chills. It. I'm getting Me chills too. all over as you're saying that. And the thing – that, like, hit me really fast was, like, you know, if you find out that one of your ancestors was, you know, living in poverty, possibly starved to death, or, you know, who knows what happened. But, I mean, there are these pretty ugly times in in the past history, you know, during the Dark Ages and that sort of stuff where there was just a lot of illness, there was a lot of death, there was a lot of poverty and starvation. And if if your ancestors came from that place, then it could easily lead to money issues mm-hmm. in your own life, you know? I mean, I can see how you could connect the dots. And if you could see if that was the case in the past, you know, a lot of people do past life regression for a similar kind of purpose. But, you know, you could do it with your own ancestry. And, and you could, when you find what the cause is, sometimes it's easier to heal it. Yeah, I think it cracks the door open with acceptance, right. uh, which is right. the great healer, one of the great healers of that energy. That's right. mm. so. Does the uh, does your work also come with an invitation to the island? And uh, do you have workshops out there? Are you still living there? What's going on? I, I do not live What's on an island anymore. What's going on with what you're doing right now? What, um, uh-huh. I actually live in the mountains in the on the east coast in Virginia. Um, but, you know, I recently led a book collaboration on dolphins and whales, and, you know, a lot of the people that were authors along with me, you know, I led the thing, but there were a lot of famous authors that were mm. part of that, that are part of the dolphin and whale community and energy healing and communication with animals and that sort of thing. A lot of them live in Hawaii. And so I, I periodically do um, take groups to swim with dolphins or connect with them, um, I've got a lot of do- you know I've got a lot of island connection. I mean I lived on a yacht myself out in Fiji for a while, so I'm re I love islands and tropics and all of that sort of thing. Sounds wonderful. What 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 else is going on um, for the, for folks uh, for us and our the audience here? What else can we know about what you're doing besides that? Oh, the things that I, I do and I offer, well, I, you know, I'm really into dowsing, obviously, so I have this e-course about dowsing. Um, I also have a six-month deep dive into my work. It's like literally daily activities and weekly lessons and all that sort of thing where um, using these healing technologies that I received through this dolphin doorway, there's meditational exercises and healing technologies, I call them, um, where we heal a lot of this trauma drama crap, I mean, really at a deep level. But that's where people are really seriously interested in going very deep and very fast and really committed to making shifts in their life. Um, I have a humongous line of what I call uh, sacred healing oils. 
they're, they're an oil that I've put flower and gem essences and dolphin healing energies into, and I top it off with aromatherapy. Those are called dancing dolphin healing oils. Um, I mean, I have them for practically everything you can imagine. I've created a blend for it. Um, and I make every one of those by hand. I, I basically pray over every single bottle and infuse it by hand wow. with the energies that I work with. So, you know, when a person calls me, it's so interesting. You know, usually people have their stuff already pre-made, but I don't do it uh-huh. like that. You know, if I get an order, I literally make it right then, so I'm tuning into the person even as I'm making it. So whether they get a custom blend or they just, you know, get one of the formulations I've created for specific purposes, they're still kind of getting a little bit custom tailored for them. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm thinking Christmas time. I'm, I'm already thinking. Wow, oh yeah. Yeah. They do make great gifts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do make great gifts. They, they're awesome gifts, and they you know they last a long time, and um, they're now made with um, all organic products, and it's fractionated co- coconut and jojoba oil, and the fractionated coconut doesn't go rancid like so many other oils do, so. You know, they last forever, and they they make you feel yummy, and the energies are, I call it yummy. I mean, the energies are fabulous. Mm. All right. I like it. I like it. So how do I get them as gifts without the people knowing, though? How do we get how well, do we get them as gifts for Christmas? With, or do you need to, do you, how is that going to work? Because somebody else might have that same question that I do. What do you mean? Like order and have me ship it to somebody else? Well, you said you or, you like to talk with each person. And then oh, 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 right. So, when a person orders, if they just go to my website, and uh-huh. you're saying if you got it for another person, exactly. just shoot me an email. Just shoot me okay. an email and say, that order I just placed, it's for this person and this person and this person, you know. Uh-huh. Okay. It's, just an, it's easy. And you can just kind of just, tune in maybe energetically or? Oh, yeah, I always do. Like, whoever okay. it's from, okay. I mean, I don't even have to do it consciously, you know? I see the name uh-huh. and my body, I'm already tuning in. I mean, I can uh, feel okay. my body tuning in. Yeah. All right. It's, it's pretty That's instantaneous. Place in my order. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. In fact, let's stay on the line. Don't, don't hang up when we're done here. Well, thank okay. you, um, Ikara. So excellent. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate you. Do you have any final words for everybody? Know that no matter what your life looks like right now, you are magnificent. You do have divine gifts to give to the universe and to the world, and the universe is conspiring on your behalf. You just have to step into it and know it. Have a beautiful day. Amen. Amen. So good. That's beautiful. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, tune in again to another fantastic speaker tomorrow. And thank you so much again to Car for being here and all of you audience. Love you. God bless you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.